What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So we have begun the new era of Impact Wrestling and tonight we had a action-packed show. So we start off the show with a look outside the arena with a mystery man stepping out of a vehicle and walking into the arena. Now this was an ongoing event throughout the entire night. We'd constantly see this mysterious person, or I should say mystery person, walking around. Uh, so after that, we got a recap of the Genesis event last week, and we actually opened the show with an Impact Grand Championship match with champion Matt Seidel defending against Falaba. So Fala made his entrance first, and obviously we noticed the four-sided ring in the arena, and JB made a very nonchalant comment about the return of the four-sided ring. It was just funny because it's a huge uh, thing, but with Seidel being the champion, there is no longer judges or rounds, and this is just a regular pinfall or submission match, so this was a decent match, um, the crowd was kind of silent throughout the whole night, I mean, you had little bits and pieces that gave them a pop, but for the most part, they were pretty quiet up until the main event. Um, but like I said, this was a decent match. Uh, so toward the end of the match, uh, Seidel went up to the top rope. Ba climbed up after him, going for, I believe, a superplex. Seidel goes for a sunset flip, unable to throw the big man down. Fala knocks him onto the ground, goes for the bonsai drop. Seidel moves out of the way, follows on the ground. Seidel goes back up to the top, hits a shooting star press for the win. And he is still your champion. So after that, we go backstage, and Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee are back there. And uh, Trevor says to Caleb that even though he doesn't have his X Division title anymore, he's got a lot in store for them. Not just me, but us. So good to see they are staying relevant. Up next, we have KM versus Lashley. So this took place because of what happened last week with Lashley ultimately leaving American Top Team and spearing Dan Lambert through the ta through a table. So I believe that the American Top Team angle is completely done as we did not get any real mention of it throughout the night besides the recap of what had happened in the past. Uh, but this was a good match, good showing for KM, that's for sure. Um, I've been an advocate for him. I think he's definitely starting to make a name for himself. I know Don Callis was really high on KM, so hopefully he gets some sort of push. Um, but like I said, he held his own in this match. We saw a couple new things from him, like uh, Lashley, um, actually KM was controlling the majority of the match. Lashley ends up on the outside. KM runs off the ropes and does a flip over the top rope onto Lashley on the outside. So that, that was something different to see from him. But ultimately... Cam goes for a pump handle slam, and Lashley puts him away with a spear. Not a huge surprise. I don't think a win over Lashley this early would be the right way to do things. So we go backstage, and Joseph Park is on the phone with his grandmother, uh, checking up on Chandler. And uh, Jacobs comes up, grabs the phone from him, and then you see Congo Kong emerge as well. And uh, Jacob grabs the phone and says that uh, he'll have to call you back. So then Jacob says, what happened to Chandler last week did not have to happen. But it will continue to happen until I get what I want. And I want Abyss. I want Monster versus Monster. So he wants Abyss next week. So th this was good. I, I think that's definitely the way the booking for Congo Kong should go. Obviously up against another monster and the whole Joseph Park not wanting to bring Abyss back. So it's good stuff, with especially with Jimmy Jacobs, because he's the perfect mouthpiece for Congo Kong, and I don't know, I'm behind anything the guy pretty much does. So we see Bobby Lashley backstage, he was, I think Eddie Edwards was behind him, and uh, he says, you know, he's been forced to decide between focusing on wrestling and mixed martial arts over the last couple of months, and he says he will focus on both w uh, wrestling, uh, spoiling shit, wrestling and MMA, and he'll do whatever the hell he wants. So up next, we have Laurel Van Ness versus the debuting Kira Hogan. Uh, this is a decent match. Good in uh, first showing for Kira. Uh, Laurel controlled the majority of the match, as generally the champion should. Uh, 
Kira was able to start to build a comeback, but went up top, but Laurel Van Ness ended up knocking her off the top rope. Laurel hit a curb stomp and then set up for the unprettier, but at this point, Allie emerged from the back, distracted Laurel. Kira was able to roll her up for the victory. So, good showing for her. Um, they announced later on in the show that next week, Kira would get a title shot due to beating the champ this week. So, good stuff. So, we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Alberto El Patron and EC3. Alberto doing what he normally does, complaining about everything, including tagging with EC3, because he should be the one main eventing by himself. Uh, he also referred to Johnny as the guy who start, always likes to change his last name. Uh, I thought that was funny. I'm sure that's Callis doing the writing there. Um, and EC3 says, while Alberto is a former champion, EC3 is a two-time champion that Alberto should follow his lead. Alberto counters and says, just don't screw up out there. So this was a little a good back and forth interview here, and Mackenzie does a fantastic job. Her facial expressions are always they're always so good. So we get LAX coming out to the ring. They talk about winning the titles back, and then uh, Conan goes on and runs down Sammy Callahan. He really loves pushing the limits in his promos with his uh, vulgarity and uh, innuendo. So it, it's it's always a good thing to see because we don't really get that anymore. Um, so it's a little different. So OVE ends up coming out. Sammy tells LAX that while he hates all four of them, he respects them. And he says that if they don't put an end to this, someone's going to end up six feet under. He says we're going to put a bow on it and kind of come back to it because they have bigger fish to fry. So that at this point, they leave the ring. Conan gets out of the ring and kind of comes up to him and goes, you guys get nothing. There's no bigger fish to fry than us. And at this point... Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley come out from the crowd and attack LAX from behind. And obviously, LAX being a four-man group, uh, eventually uh, outnumbered them as Conley and Trevor Lee ran away. I am very glad that they are going to be, I, I would assume, I should say, they're going to put these two as a tag team for the time being. Um, I had talked about it, I think, weeks back, that I think if they're not going to have any you know, and Trevor Lee doing any X Division matches or something like that, that they should definitely put these two together as a tag team, which, speaking of which, we did not get any X Division matches this week. But I believe part of it is because Desmond Xavier was over in Japan, and I think uh, Ishimori was as well recently. Um, but anyway, so we have another McKenzie interview uh, interviewing the other two men that will be facing EC3 and Alberto El Patron, and that is Johnny Impact and Moose. Uh, Moose says you have an all-star tag team, and obviously he starts to talk to Johnny, and he can't remember his last name. He's about to say Johnny Mundo. So I got another kick out of this, and uh, Johnny basically cuts the promo in Spanish, and he says, Moose, you want to translate that for me or for them? And then he Moose says, ah, oh, we're going to beat the hell out of them. So... Then we see Eli and Adonis backstage talking, and Eli asks about the special guests that Adonis brought, and Adonis is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't bring any special guests, but I but tonight's going to be the celebration of Eli. And then uh, Eli makes a joke about Chris Adonis saving Johnny Impact's life by catching him jumping off the cage last week. This was funny as well. And then we get a teaser video for the Machine Brian Cage. It was a really well done video. Um, this guy's going to be huge for the company. I, I, I'm very happy they decided to bring him in. And up next, we have the tag team match, which I believe they had called the main event. Um, it was Alberto and EC3 versus Johnny Impact and Moose. Um, this was a good match. They gave it some time, gave it about 15 minutes. Um, but not a surprise here. Alberto and EC3, of course, employing heel tactics throughout the match, generally the legal illegal man um, would attack the other uh, opposition's legal man while the ref had the back turn and things like that. Uh, they were able to control a good portion of the match. Uh, they first isolated Moose and then isolated Impact after we went to commercial. Uh, but the finish saw Alberto hitting the double stomp on Johnny in the trio well position in the corner. And then he ends up getting hit 
in, uh, Alberto, that is, with a vicious clothesline from Moose. Moose pins Alberto, and that's that. Um, so up next, we have the real main event of the show, which is the Eli Br Drake celebration. So the crowd finally started getting into the show really around this point. Um, uh, obviously, this was the Eli or the facts of Eli Drake's life presented by Chris Adonis. Um, so Adonis started out by saying, fact, you're the greatest champion that ever lived, and then played a video of Eli. And they said, next, fact, you're the greatest dresser that ever lived, and we see a vi another video. And then he says, you're the greatest friend that ever lived. We get another, and then we get another video, but unfortunately, this is a video that Adonis had not given the production crew, and it was actually the incident from when he was in the turkey suit during the Thanksgiving Day episode and hits hit Eli in the face with a pie. So Eli tries to turn the situation around, and he says, you know what? That pie was delicious. And then he goes on to call himself the greatest man that ever lived. And this brought out Austin Aries. This got a good pop from the crowd uh, for the people there that knew who he was as he's been out of the company for a couple years now. Um, so then Aries says that you're looking at the greatest man that ever lived. And uh, he runs down a list of his accomplishments. And he says, before you call yourself the greatest champion, you have to beat me. And Eli responds with, if you want to do this right here, right now, then no. And he starts to leave the ring. And Aries says, well, I guess you don't have balls between those legs of yours. At this point, Adonis attacks Aries from behind, and Eli calls out for a referee to come out to have a match. So Aries is on the ground. Eli goes for the quick pin. Aries kicks out at two. Uh, Eli's kind of confused because he figured that would be it. So Eli starts to run at Ares. Ares moves out of the way. Eli goes shoulder first into the ring post. Adonis gets up on the apron. Uh, Ares hits him with Dissus forearm, or five arm, I believe that's what he called it. And Ares hits Eli with the brain buster, and we have a new champion. Um, not the way I would have gone about booking this, but I understand they wanted to make an impact. Uh... Definitely kind of throw things in your face that, you know, we're changing the landscape here. Uh, I would have liked to see Aries, uh, not Aries, Eli carry the title for at least a little while longer. But we will see what happens. Like I said, this was a good episode. A lot going on. Um, you know, Callis and Demora have reiterated the fact that basically Rome wasn't built in a day. So... This is going to be a long project here, but as their first show, I thought it was very good. So I will see you guys on Saturday for the Impact Report, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye, guys.